Is it necessary? Is it achieving its goals? I doubt it. It's reducing consumer protection. Does it really build up the UK's green finance or cyber finance? No, I don't think it will. I find it an unnecessary piece of propaganda on behalf of Brexit. That's all it is, really. Happy New Year. I'm John Stevens, the chair of the Federal Trust, and I'm talking this morning with Graham Bishop, who is a member of the board of the Federal Trust and is also the producer of a very significant information service on uh, Euro monetary matters, which he's just expanded, I gather. It's a yes. bargain at, at these inflationary times at five euros a month. Graham, yeah. Yeah. we've seen uh, quite a significant development in the Euro in the sense mm -hmm. that it's now gained another member in Croatia and seems to be... Uh, in becoming increasingly attractive in many respects in the current uh, rising interest rate environment. The British government has reacted to this in seeking to defend the City of London against potential losses of Euro business by announcing recently a whole series of measures which they dubbed uh, the Edinburgh uh, proposals. Would you like to Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I think they're, uh, they're, they're right to be concerned about the magnetic attraction of the euro and Croatia joining as a 20th member um, in marked contrast to all the uh, typical forecasts that the euro would have exploded long ago. I think that's quite a, very interesting. So the UK needs in this post-Brexit world to think about its position, there's no doubt. Um, and the, the uh, Her Majesty's government, His Majesty's, sorry, His Majesty's government has been um, making uh, sort of very strong statements for quite some time, go back more than a year, Mansion House speech, etc., uh, about the need to preserve the attractions of the UK's financial marketplace in a global context. So this um, Edinburgh package, Edinburgh collection, they call it, of measures, uh, why they announce it in Edinburgh, which is one of the most pro-European places in the country, I can't imagine, but that's other question. But it, it is a big package, there's no doubt. And this is um, with the financial services and uh, markets and services bill just going through to the House of Lords at the moment. It'll become law in the next two or three months, I suppose. Um, th th there is a lot of change going on. Um, so I can what are the main points of the package? Oof, uh, impossible to summarise, really, um, without going through the whole list. There's 12 separate consultations and recommendations. And all this is about um, setting the, the UK as being an agile and open and high regulatory standards marketplace. But when they say high standards, there seems to be a confusion between reform and, in my view, lowering standards. But we can come to that in a moment. Well, the choice of Edinburgh is slightly strange because were Scotland to, to obtain independence and join the euro, <laughs> clearly Edinburgh would be quite a significant rival to the yes, city. Yes, it might be the 21st but, member. But on these measures, I mean, do you feel that they amount to any serious enhancement of London's competitive position? Um, I don't think they enhance it. I think there's a scramble to try and preserve what there is of it. And we, we see the... Um, the, the Various um, market movements uh, have made the French and um, other European stock markets bigger than the London stock market. We see a steady drip, drip, drip of traders moving to Milan or Paris or Frankfurt. Now, the UK has got to try and hang on. But I, I must say, the way they've chosen to do it, I find this pretty strange. The lowering of standards that you mentioned uh, seems slightly strange in the light of the instability that was revealed in the gilt market in the immediate mm -hmm. aftermath of uh, the uh, trust uh, uh, Quarteg budget. Yes, I and mean, the, um, the whole thing about that, I mean, uh, this isn't the moment to go into it in any detail, but uh, it is ironic that uh, Quarteg once was going to cut taxes on derivatives traders to attract them to London. They were the very people who then torpedoed the mm. LDI system and the gilt market with it. So I, I find that irony quite marked. But um, what, what this is all about is taking back control. 
But <clears throat> let's be clear, the government was trying to take control away from the independent regulators who kicked back pretty hard. And uh, because they said this is a key part of the attractions of the UK market is the quality and independence of the regulators. But all that's and indeed of the central bank. I, indeed, yes. Yes, well, the regulators live in the central bank. But all that's happening is Parliament is being cut out. It's all going to the government. On the question of potentially lowering standards in this package, I mean, would you like to say a little bit about the consumer protection element of this and whether risks might be increased for pension fund holders and the rest? Yes, I think the um, consumer protection, of course, is held up as being something uh, very strong. But uh, my uh, attention was struck by the by the decision to revoke PRIPS, uh, the Packaged Retail Investment Insurance uh, Products. Um, that's gone through huge discussions in the EU about how to uh, disclose material to investors in a way which they can understand. Are we going to sort of bypass all that and come up with something brand new? Doubt it. I think the consumers will be on the wrong end of that. But perhaps the most substantial thing is the um, decision to review the senior manager's uh, regime and certification. Because this was set up after the financial crash as a result of um, Andrew Tyree's committee, which included uh, the moral background, the Archbishop of Canterbury, uh, and how to make sure the financial system does not, well, is properly informed and doesn't misbehave. And so we now appear to be rowing back on that. And that was the mechanism to stop uh, real problems appearing for consumers. And it's been watered down. Another strategic purpose of these reforms appears to be to try and encourage uh, UK pension funds to channel more money into particularly UK infrastructure projects. Mm. Is that a potential area of enhanced risk? Well, of course, the, the whole question of solvency too, um, uh, deeply technical, but uh, the EU is changing, is reviewing solvency too anyway, because they realise that, that there are problems. But to enable um, pension funds and life insurance companies to invest in illiquid assets. Uh, yes, they're long dated because they're infrastructure stuff. But if, if it um, if there's a major change in the in the energy market, for example, some of these infrastructure things may become useless and unsaleable. So I'm, I'm quite concerned that there is a plan to deliberately attract long term savings, pension funds, life companies into illiquid areas. One of the other elements of trying to protect the City of London's uh, global position has been to talk up our capacity to be a green ah, hub of some kind, yes. to focus yes. on um, renewable uh, finance in various ways. How do you see that? Well, <clears throat> we're going to be the centre of it, you know. Uh, we're going to be the market leader. And then you actually look at what's going on. Um, the EU is clearly got first mover advantage in the regulatory framework for all this. They've got a, a working set of legislation about disclosure and all the rest of it. it it's it's up and functioning, uh, becomes operational very shortly. Um, even the IFRS, the International Financial uh, Reporting Standards Body, has now, at a global level, set up the International Sustainability Standards Board, ISSB, to its friends, uh, and this, the whole purpose of this is to, at the insistence of in investors globally, is to create a single set of standards, which are global standards, which um, everyone can know exactly what they are. So if we now set out in our relatively small market uh, to have a different set of standards from the rest of the world, who, whose standards is the world going to follow? So I find this a very unfortunate approach to seizing leadership. Another area where we were seeking to have a a new hub role was yeah. in crypt, cryptocurrencies yes. of various kinds. It, I, so the, these plans were announced, I, I noticed, about the same time that El Salvador adopted Bitcoin as its official yes. uh, yeah. currency. Um, would you like to comment on how that is working out? Well, um, uh, a year ago, this was going to be the hot topic, we're going to be the global cyber hub. Um, and then in November this year, uh, FDX exploded and uh, Bitcoin, which was a year ago was $50,000 a shot, is now down to <clears throat> 14000 
And so even a couple of weeks after, the Edinburgh reforms were announced and again continuing to push the idea that we're going to be the cyber hub. Uh, everybody else is beginning to run a mile from all this cyber stuff. And there's nothing wrong with um, uh, a certain amount of cyber, but the unbacked uh, cyber money without a, an asset backing is uh, the ECB has now just labeled it that it should be regulated as nothing but gambling. And that's that's what's happening. And for us to become the global center of gambling um, would be a very unfortunate message to send to the rest of the world. Finally, the, the really big issue, as we've discussed before, is the shift of uh, euro denominated clearing. Hmm. Does this have any impact on the timetable for that or its further implications? Well, um, this could be the subject of a, another video easily, <laughs> very easily. But just the, the shorthand, the Financial Services and Markets Bill um, will allow the UK to uh, um, resolve CCPs in its territory. And those CCPs include, of course, all the CCPs that uh, do euros. So what we're faced with is the UK can unilaterally decide to impose large haircuts on the, rather than put up UK taxpayer money, could uh, impose large tax, uh, haircuts on EU financial institutions, citizens. I can't imagine that going down very well. Uh, and they're already looking at this sort of thing themselves um, to protect themselves against this sort of instability. Because that, that's a big topic and we can do another another chat about that at some later stage, I think. Pilot, do you conceive that there is any shift of mood uh, in the city or more widely towards the euro? I mean, this is particularly significant coming back to Edinburgh mm -hmm. and yes. Scotland. It does seem that the um, credibility of potential euro membership for an independent Scotland is very near the core of arguments about Scottish independence. Do um, you feel that the way in which uh, events have been panning out over the last few years and with the position of the euro vis-a-vis -vis sterling, that this could be something which uh, enhances the arguments for independence? Yes, I mean, the, the idea that um, Scotland would have to be tied to sterling <clears throat> effectively means they wouldn't be independent. Um, now, if they're tied because interest rate policy would be set in London um, for Britain, for England, um, if they ad ad adopt the euro, it will be a European um, interest rate policy for the whole of Europe. Uh, that's the nature of the ECB. So I can see the the attractions of, which have just produced Croatia joining of the euro being very attractive to Scotland. After all, Scotland is not a big country, but it's not small either. There are quite a number of other countries with that sort of size. And when will we find Denmark decides to switch from being a, a sort of effectively a well, not quite a currency board, but a fixed, pretty fixed exchange rate through the ERM? And what about Sweden? They're suddenly joining the um, NATO. Uh, the attractions of in the new geopolitical reality, the attraction to the euro will be very strong. So, Graham, how would you summarise the Edinburgh package? Well, it's it's a massive piece of work um, as it goes through. Um, is it necessary? Is it achieving its goals? I doubt it. It's, um, as we said, reducing consumer protection. Um, does it really build up the UK's standing in uh, green finance or cyber finance? No, I don't think it will. Um, so I, I find it an unnecessary piece of propaganda on behalf of Brexit. That's all it is, really.